Hello everyone, Sam here for another walk and talk. Um, it's about a week late, a few dollars short, but here we are nonetheless. Uh, let me take these off so you can see my you know, crazy eyes. So this is a video I've been wanting to do now for, I guess a week. Um, I just recently attended my first COVID era concert and those of you who have been um, on my channel from the beginning well this Janu past January I mentioned that when things started opening up that part of my channel was going to be uh, talking about concerts and live music that I get to go see well this is the first in that um, part of my channel so um, back in 2019 my sister gifted me a ticket for James Taylor with uh, Jackson Brown and it was really exciting because the show sold out in just a few hours and it was at our um, local Civic Center um, I think they sold 75 7600 tickets of um, seating that you know could could see the stage so you know it's a, it's a local auditorium where we have hockey games, lots of concerts, um, basketball games. Um, we, we have indoor fairs there. Um, the circus has been there. So it's one of those venues. And um, obviously it was canceled. It was supposed to be June of 2020. It was postponed. Uh, they pushed it out till November of 2020, postponed. And so finally on I think it was the 11th it was august 11th we finally got to go see james taylor and jackson brown now i was very excited because i've just recently really delved in delve into jackson brown james taylor you know I, I like james taylor um you know i know all of his hits but he's never been somebody that i'm interested in digging more into his catalog like it's just i don't know it, it doesn't interest me that much but he's a legend you knew the beatles he was signed with the beatles on apple records why not knock him off your bucket list plus it was a nice gift from my sister for my birthday a couple years ago um but i was really excited to see jackson brown who was listed as like the special guest that james taylor was going to have so we got to the venue it was sold out um lines of people and you know about half the people were in masks, half the people weren't. So it, there was some hesitation going in because things are not quite you know, back to normal and especially going into the, win the winter time, you know, new you know, COVID strains and everything are, are showing up again. So I was a little hesitant. Um, I was in a mask and my mom and my sister who were also at the show sitting in, a, in another section because she could only get tickets she could only get two tickets together and one separate, so I was separate. Um, but I was fine. I was just a section over from where they were, and I could see them. You know, they were just really just a couple rows um, near me. But we got there. It was packed. We went inside, and the show started at 7.30. Jackson Brown came out. He opened with the song, I'm Alive, from 1993. And... I hadn't seen a live show since November of 2019. So when he started breaking into I'm Alive, which is some great positive lyrics, my eyes were a little bit misty. Um, I was like, wow, I'm hearing live music. I'm in a room with 7,600 people. Jackson Brown's on the stage. Jackson Brown himself um, made it through COVID early on in the pandemic. So he is a survivor and you know he, I mean, he's in his 70s early 70s and he's singing i'm alive he sounds fantastic so like i'm getting misty eyed i'm like this is happening and he knocked out i think he did 10 songs for exact like exactly an hour he did three songs from his album downhill from everywhere um he did downhill from everywhere until justice is real and my cleveland heart um he did you know late for the sky doctor my eyes 
um, he did the when he he did the pretender, and just kind of out of the blue, like without really much of an announcement, James Taylor walks on stage, and does a duet with him on the pretender. So that was cool. So I was like, I was misty eyed during that. I was misty eyed during Doctor My Eyes, and then he closed with Running on Empty, which was just a killer performance of Running on Empty. And you know. I was misty-eyed during that. I was like, good grief. I didn't think this concert was going to hit me like this. Um, and so Jackson Brown went off stage. He had a killer band. Um, Greg Leitz, um, Leitz, Leitz, Leitz was on steel guitar. Val Killam was on um, electric lead guitar. Just a killer, killer band. So then they have about a 30-minute stage breakdown. They bring James Taylor's band um, equipment up on the stage then James Taylor show starts with like this curtain that was on the stage with video clips of people singing James Taylor songs during the pandemic from their homes and just talking about what kind of an inspiration he was to them and then the curtain goes up James Taylor is singing um, his voice is a little shaky to start it's not as strong as Jackson Brown's he's lost a little bit of his volume in his early 70s but you know it's James Taylor. His guitar playing is definitely James Taylor. I mean, he played every. I mean, he played Steamroller, Mexico, um, Carolina in My Mind, Fire and Rain. Um, gosh, Sweet Baby James, Copper Line, um, Sp Shed a Little Light. Um, he had a killer band. Um, his son, Henry, was one of the background vocalists. One of his background singers has sung with Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Rod Stewart. Um, just, I mean, really, really good. And so he finishes, um, and then at the end of the show, he comes back up for the encore. And he does shed a little, spread a little light. And then he's like, is Jackson Brown still here? And then Jackson Brown comes out. They do Running on Empty to get, I mean, excuse me, they do Take It Easy. Of course, the Eagles had the big hit with it, but Jackson co-wrote it with Glenn Fra. It's actually, I think, mostly a Jackson Brown song. And that was really good for Jackson Brown to come back out. And then Jackson Brown stayed on stage. They sang um, You've Got a Friend, the Carol King song which is a great closer to a concert, especially after this whole year that we've been through, year and a half that we've been through. So, oh, and I should also say that uh, Steve Gadd was the drummer for James Taylor. And if you're at all familiar with Steve Gadd, you know he played on Aha by Steely Dan. He's played on, he played at the Simon and Garfunkel concert in Central Park in the 80s. He played the, Killer drum beat on 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover by Paul Simon. He played on Late in the Evening by Paul Simon. He's, you know, he's a musician's musician. So, uh, you know, they're still on tour. Check them out if you can. It was pretty reasonable price tickets from what I remember. Um, you know, I'm glad to see a show, even if it's the only show I see this year. I was happy it was that one. Um, I have tickets to another show later. Not sure if it's going to happen. We'll see what October brings. But let me know if you've seen the tour, if you have tickets for the tour, and I will talk to you soon. Because um, uh, I still have, um, I'm still working on some videos that are going to be kind of a thank you for 100, now 100 plus subscribers to my channel. So stay, stay tuned for that. I'll talk to you all soon. Take it easy.